Hey guys, Andy here. So um, I'm going to start the video off with a big thank you to mine who basically once again has bought a new device but shipped it to me first to have a play with it before I send it on to him. So thank you very much for that. I do appreciate. Um, I've used quite a few uh, Chinese import devices. I'm not afraid to kind of, not afraid, but I don't mind waiting a few weeks, months um, to ship a phone in from China to, to see what they're like, really, to see if they're worthwhile for you guys to wait these few weeks or months. Um, but I don't think I've had an Elephone before. So when mine said he was getting the Elephone S8, didn't want to have a play with it, I had a quick look at what it looked like and the specs and thought, yeah, that looks like an interesting device. Um, instantly, you look at the screen and, and it's it's gonna, it's kind of, I don't know if I call it a head turner, but people will ask you questions and like, wow, where did you get that from? That's, that looks amazing. So it's it's got a it's got a very unique selling point, I think, in some ways, just just how it looks. There is a bit of a chin, chin that houses the fingerprint sensor, but apart from that, I mean, it's pretty much bezel-less, um, which is quite impressive. You notice that to do that, they've put the front-facing camera down at the base, and when you actually open the camera and switch to front-facing, it, it advises you to turn it around the other way, which then obviously puts it at the top, um, which, yeah, why not, really, I guess? So that's not really a, a problem. Um, other parts of the design, so it's it's quite a nice design all in all. It's a bit of a fingerprint magnet, I would say. So I've tried to give it a bit of a clean, but even then you can see some marks on the back. Uh, it does have a dual nano SIM, or I think it's the hybrid. I think you can put a, an SD card in the second slot. I generally don't bother. This one's got 64 gig of storage. That's plenty for me. Um, another thing you might notice, it's not actually got any other buttons other than this one home button. So if you go into something, at first I was like, well, where's the back button? And actually, the home key is the back button. Or you press it twice. Well, I'm just going to do the same thing at this point. But pressing it twice takes you to the home. Holding it down brings up the amp switcher. So that's that's right. I thought that's actually quite clever. Um, I thought I'd get more and more used to it, and I haven't really. I keep still forgetting sometimes. Sort of, no, wait, what do I do to bring up the amp switcher? I would prefer to have separate buttons. I'm not going to lie, but at the same time, it's yeah, it works quite well. I think it's you do kind of get the hang of it, kind of. Um, so you'll have noticed obviously the fingerprint sensor is on the front in the chin. I do, th I think I prefer fingerprint sensors on the back, but it's not a you know it's not a big issue. It does have some advantages. Um, it's not the quickest of fingerprint sensors. It's funny. I did. I watched a couple of the reviews of the S8 before I did my just kind of to see if I'd missed anything. And one of the guys had said, well, one person said, I think it was Unboxed Therapy, said, yeah, it's a really fast fingerprint sensor. No, it isn't. Um, just, I mean, I, I could tell straight away, really, even without comparing to someone else, you could tell it wasn't that quick. And I watched another one where the guy said, it's quite a fast fingerprint sensor, but the screen doesn't turn on very quick. And at the time I thought, what's he talking about? That just means it's not a very fast fingerprint sensor. But actually, I know what he means, because I put my thumb on, I feel a vibration, and then the screen comes on. So the actual vibration is quite quick. Thumb, vibration, screen. It's a little bit weird, so I know what he means actually. The fingerprint sensor itself feels quite quick, just the screen doesn't come on, which is a little bit weird. So yeah, it's an interesting design to the device. I like the sort of little colour dash around the power button. Can you see that? Sort of little pinky purple. If that's showing. Uh, it's a textured power button. Obviously the volume rock on the other side there. On the back we just have the camera, the 21, the single 21 megapixel Sony uh, CMOS camera. It's a reasonable weight, the device at 195 grams, that's not a light device. The uh, system on chip is a MediaTek Helio X25. The CPU is actually a DECA core, so it's got 10 different cores. There's 2 times 2.5 gigahertz ARM Cortex A72, 4 times 2 gigahertz ARM Cortex A53, and 4 times 1.4 gigahertz also ARM Cortex A53. Sounds quite impressive. Uh, the GPU is the ARM Mali T880 MP4. I can't say how new or good that is. That's the problem with these Chinese phones when they have different chipsets. I don't really know that much about them, if I'm honest. Uh, the RAM is 4 gig. I was finding it was Geekbench in around 4,200, which is not great. Um, although that's the multi, uh, the multi core score. The single core was actually quite high, at about 1,600. So that's interesting. I guess that's because one of them is a A72 running at 2.5 gigahertz. So I guess that will score better than a lot. I did notice when I was playing some games and things that it got a little, the device got a little bit warm. Um, I checked the temperature and it was around 36, 37. So a bit warm, but nothing really to worry about. It didn't overheat. Um, it does have an FM receiver in the phone, 
but there's no headphone jack as you sort of see top and bottom uh, there's no wireless charging which I wouldn't necessarily expect of a of a device that costs 170 pounds on Aliexpress so um, the speaker isn't great the volumes okay it doesn't sound that good if I'm quite honest um, we'll give you a quick quick demo So to me, it's just a little bit tinny. There's not much space. It's not very rounded. I know that's very hard to do in a in a small mobile phone, but there are others that do it a lot better. Others that are quite cheap as well, if I'm honest. Um, it sounds a bit better with the podcast. Let me show you that. Which which kind of surprised me. That's the number two app people listen to Twit with, by the way. It's very big. Uh, number, it is Pocket Cast. I love yeah, it. I love it. Yeah, iOS, Android, uh, Shifty Jelly out of Australia. So it's kind of more about the volume, I suppose, when you come to a podcast and the spoken voice, and you know, phone calls made using the speaker. And for that, it's okay; it's reasonable. It's not, you know, you don't, you're not listening to it thinking, "Oh my god, it sounds terrible." But when you play music, you do kind of notice that it's a bit tinny. There's, it's just not rounded like I might hope it would be. So the amazing screen is a six-inch IPS LCD 2K screen. So that's 1440 by 2560. Um, it's a 16 by 9 ratio, so that seems a little old-fashioned almost to me now. All the newer devices are coming out with kind of 18 by 9 or even 20 by 9. So this just feels a little bit wide at 6 inches and 16 by 9. But, you know, you might you, if you're fine with that, then that's, that's not a problem. Um, it's about 490 pixels per inch, which means that it does look... I do think it looks a pretty fantastic screen. I don't know how well it's going to come across on the, on the video, but that, that's really quite a crisp vibrant screen um, the only problem is it doesn't do so well in the daylight so I had it outside earlier today it's quite a sunny day um, and I unlocked the phone and you almost couldn't tell that the phone was unlocked I went in and thought okay let's try and let's crank the brightness all the way up to the top which you would hope it would do anyway through auto detection and even then it was still wasn't all that bright so it just struggled a little bit in the bright lights um, what else is to know? This Corning Gorilla Glass 4 covering the, the front screen, so it should be relatively safe. So just to give you a bit of a look of some, this is actually 2K footage, well it's 4K footage that I shot myself with my drone. I think, I think that looks fantastic, that is a really good screen. The detail, the colours, the sharpness, the quality. That looks really good. So even then, actually, I can feel it warming up a little bit at the back. So onto the camera. It's a 21 megapixel Sony sensor uh, with f2.0 uh, aperture, which means it's, uh, well, I mean, f2.0 these days actually isn't great. The lower the number, the better it's going to do in low light. Um, it can shoot raw footage. You can also get it down to zero shutter delay. Let me just quickly show you. Uh, again, I actually saw this in someone else's video, but you have to turn off all of the anti-shake, the face detection, all those sort of things, and leave on the zero shutter delay. And then you should find, if we what can you see? That was that was pretty much instant. Um, the quality of the photos, I, I finished editing a video this morning about this versus the Elephone S8 versus the Redmi 5 Plus. And it was quite apparent that the colours on the Elephone S8 that looked a little bit washed out, or like the, like all the images were slightly overexposed, perhaps. Um, the detail I think looks quite good. The colours just need a bit of, for me, a bit of tweaking. The video can go up to 4K from the rear-facing camera, but from the front-facing, which is an 8 megapixel sensor as well, the front-facing can only do 400, uh, 480p, which is a little bit poor, really. Um, but generally, I think it looked quite good. Uh, not what I would, I wouldn't say it was an issue. If you'd like a good camera, you're probably going to be okay with the Elephone S8. Um, if we move on to connectivity briefly, I made a few calls with it, no particular issues, everything sounded great, no no delays, no stuttering, no, no problems. Um, the Wi-Fi I had no particular issues, the GPS seemed pretty good, locked in quite quickly. 
The Bluetooth, I did have a couple of issues, but only briefly and in sort of certain situations. So it basically, I was trying to connect to my motorbike helmet for my ride home from the gym, and it just wasn't connecting through initially very well when I had the helmet on the, on the phone in my pocket. But as I got up and sat up onto the bike, and the phone would have moved just to a slightly different position, kind of maybe a clearer line of sight to the helmet, it just cleared up and it was fine. Um, I didn't have any other issues. You know, when I was in the gym using it with, my, with it in my pocket to my earphones, using the Bluetooth, it was fine all the way through. So I'm not quite sure what that was about, to be honest. Um, if we go on to the software, it's actually running a pretty stock version of Android, as you can see by like looking at the settings. We're gonna come down to About Phone, and you can see that it's running Android 7.1.1, which is about a year and a half behind now, but it's still a reasonably new version of Android. My bigger concern would be the security patch level still being September. So that's about eight months away at this point. Um, so if that's one of your sort of key priorities, regular updates, this might not be the device for you. Uh, otherwise, generally the software was, I would say pretty slick. I don't really have any issues. I don't think at any point that I notice any lag. It's generally quite a quick um, software, Qu quite a quick software, quite a quick operating system. Um, one thing I thought was a little bit weird, so that gap at the top there, that's as high as I can get my widget, it won't, that, that space there is just kind of wasted on the launcher that comes with the device, which I think is quite weird. Now obviously you can install Nova Launcher and it doesn't really matter, but yeah, it just seemed a little bit odd to me. Never mind. Um, if we move on to the battery, it's a 4,000 milliamp hour battery, which is pretty big. And if I'm honest, I was expecting more than I got from it. So in my test, my hour long test, it finished at 89%, which isn't particularly great. It's not an issue. But that's what I'd have expected if the phone had like a, I don't know, a 3,400 milliamp hour battery. Um, so right now, I am at 50%, having come off charge at about seven this morning. Uh, if we find power, I've only had about, oh, where have I missed it? Battery, sorry, there we go. Uh, I've only had about an hour, hour and, hour and 17 minutes screen on time, so not a lot. Having said that, I've been in the gym, Bluetooth streaming my music, where a lot of times the screen is off. Um, so it is one of my sort of higher intensity days. I've been doing some other stuff with my camera test and things like this morning. If on an average day when I go home from work, I was around about 60%, which is kind of where I am with my Pixel 2. So I was just expecting a little bit more from a 4,000 milliamp hour battery, but not that it's an issue. Um, I also found that I don't think it can take any more than two amps when charging. So I tried plugging it into the charger that used my Pixel and it just didn't do anything. I had to plug it in through a Type A to Type C, which I don't think I mentioned actually. It's got USB Type C, um, and then it would charge fine. And you're looking at kind of an hour and a half, two hours plus to charge up. But with the battery with 4,000 4, mAh, you should be fine through the day and you're just going to charge overnight anyway. So hackability wise, I looked on XTA developers, there was a custom recovery, but there wasn't any custom ROMs at that point. Um, and it's been out quite a while, so I wouldn't particularly be holding out any hopes if that's, again, if that's something you wanted to do with it. So all in all, I would say it looks a fantastic device. The screen is amazing, unless you're in bright, bright daylight, then you might struggle a little bit, but the screen, I mean, look at that. All the bezel around the edges, I don't mind the chin personally, the colors and the and the sort of clarity and everything from that screen really is very good. Without doubt for me, that's the sort of the strong point of the device. It does actually feel quite a well-made phone. Um, it doesn't feel sort of cheap in any way. I'm not a fan of the 16 by nine. I would have preferred 18 by nine. So a little bit, take a little bit of the width off and maybe gone a little bit taller on the device. Um, but that's a small thing, I guess. Um, there didn't seem to be any lag, as I think I've mentioned already. It seemed quite nice and slick and smooth, so there's enough power there. The, ca the camera could do with a little bit more color in it. Um, but all in all, I think really good value for a £170 device. You can't really go far wrong with it, to be honest. So those are my thoughts. I'd love to know yours in the comments down below. Please do let me know. But for now, my name's Andy, and I'll catch you all again soon. Thank you.